This podcast has been created by volunteers from the Museum of Norwich in collaboration with the Norfolk Record Office in its role as the East of England hub for the Unlocking Our Sound Heritage project. This is a national endeavour which is digitally preserving rare and at-risk sound archives and encouraging their use. Unlocking Our Sound Heritage is led by the British Library and made possible with thanks to the National Lottery Heritage Fund. Hello and welcome to my podcast. I've chosen to listen to some clips from the Sound Archive about life as a fisherman. In particular, I've chosen to look at superstitions that the fishermen would have to keep them safe at sea. The first clip I found is from a fisherman who lived in Winterton and the Great Yarmouth area. Are there many superstitions? Oh yes, oh yes, definitely, definitely. A parson, oh, well, we are now. Still the same? Right? Yes, definitely. Still don't like parsons? No, and rabbits and ferrets, oh, we mustn't talk about them at sea. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. And uh, wooden legs, you know. No, I've never heard. Have uh, you? Yeah. I've heard the rabbits and parts. Uh, yeah, but we had an old chap in Winton, I used to call him Fizzle. Bowden, his name was. Well, we had we had one Winton skipper, Teddy Flat. They were going to see you this day. He, uh, poor little Flat, come out of the pub, and the crew all were put a waiting for him. and. Fizzle walked up. He's got a wooden leg? Yes. Sent them all home. Did he? He wouldn't go. We mustn't mention that. <laughs> well, I do now. If you mention rabbits, oh, well, that's finished. You're getting out of now. Yeah, I've, I've heard of that one. I've never heard the one with wooden legs. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Fizzle. Mm. That was a bit. Oh, we mustn't mention him. <laughs> and a parson, oh. And mm. ferrets and rabbits and pigs. <laughs> Very superstitious, aren't they? Well, they are now. Mm. Mm. Yes, these traditions keep keep going. Oh, so they do. Now, I'll, now I'll tell you a yarn about that. And me and my chummy, we were going off that night after salmon. I had an old dog then called Spot. Well, he brought a young leveret down and laid it in the bar of our boat. Now, this is a truth. And I said, oh, even, I said, oh, hell, why not to go to sea? Uh, he said, oh, pay no heed to that, mate. I said, do you see then? Well, we'd been over that ground, raw salmon net, mm. often and often and often. And away we go and shoot, and we spoil it. Mm. Our net was in ribbons. I brought it home, and the missus mended it. A fortnight. Mm. Now, don't that make you think? Yes, certainly does. Hey, ah. Uh, yeah. And now, and now that's the God's truth, I'm, I'm a setting in this chair. Yeah, how long ago was that? Oh, about six years. Not so, so long ago. No. Right? Yeah. And we'd been over that ground. Yeah. Never thought about getting fast. <laughs> now I said, oh, what do you think of it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir, it's certainly a big coincidence. Yeah. That make you think. Mm. But when I was in the war, you know you talk about that. I was in the war, you home fishing, and uh, uh, the Winton Parson come off like us. He come to sea with us for a night. Really? Yeah, Mr. Porter. And uh, all the butts kept clear on us. <laughs> on our wiggers, you know, you would hear them, don't, don't go again the warrior, they got a pass in the boat. Well, we goes and shoot, and now we had a lovely bath, lovely clear bath. We get a hundred and eighty crane. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that made you think again, didn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you do anything like, I've heard that the Cornish fishermen used to put um, a bit of silver in the end float sometimes. Ah, uh, right? we used to, uh, we used to chuck a, a, a chuck a penny overboard oh, to on. buy them. Yeah. Cast nets in the name of the Lord always. Always. When you used to shoot, and you always shot the net the same side the Lord shot his. But he told the, the disciple to shoot. You always shoot your net the same side. Yeah. Yes. That's one thing I will say about the fishing. In the name of the Lord, pray God send what he thinks fit. 
Mm. You say that every time you every, every time we used to shoot iron. Well, mm. not everybody, but some would. We used to. Mm. Mm. Oh, I'm talking about the drifters now. Yes, yes. Not the longshore. No. Yeah. Longshore wouldn't say that. No, no. just chill. It's hard to imagine what life on the sea was like if you've never really been there, which I haven't. What I do imagine the sea could be like is when it, when it gets really choppy, it's like a Turner painting with the rolling waves battering the ship while it bobs along on top of the waves in a huge open space with only the horizon in sight. I think maybe they use superstitions as a coping mechanism to deal with these conditions at sea and their time away from their family, hoping to return safely to them soon. And I'll tell you something else. A fisherman's wife won't wash the day he go away. Won't you? Bear that in mind. No. They never wash a fisherman's wife. What's that? Clothing, you mean? Or clothing. The no, wash the clothes. Ah, the no, cells, yeah, no, but no, the, no. the clothing. The clothing. Because as... There's a lot of wash days done in Monday's end, mm. but I'll bet he's chilling if, if there's a husband what got a wife in Witherton, never wash them away. Never. Well, this uh, is in danger. So uh, that's what I reckon they reckon that was. Mm. Mm. They never do that. They never wash a fisherman away. Never. And they wouldn't do it today, I bet, if they no, still are going. No. Yeah. This next clip is separate from the two previous interviews that I've played. This is Fred Jarrod speaking about superstitions that he's heard of. A lot of them would never burn fish bones. Wouldn't they? No. No, no. They'd say, no. uh, boil me, fry me, or broil me, but never burn me bones. Yeah. They reckon if you burnt fish bones, you was, uh, you know, sort of putting a spell on yourself because you wouldn't get catch any more. Okay. It's interesting, I've heard that the um, Scottish fishermen would never burn a fish bone. No, no. my father I never do. burned a fish bone. And he'd never, he'd never allow knives to be crossed on the, no. the table. No, no. Say, oh, take them knives not, and the knives would cross. And they'd never, they'd never bend a new sail or net, we know what I mean for bending, mm, yeah. uh, on a Friday. And they'd never start a job on a Friday if they could help it. They'd never start a fresh. My father said to me, oh, you don't want to start there for old years. That's mm. a good sign. Mm. Oh, I don't know. Well, you, you mean that would be sort of like a fresh season going over from the yeah. Strat in the well, Sunny yeah. Hole? Sort they of. would never start on a Friday. They would start a job on a Friday. And they wouldn't put any new aboard the boat. They wouldn't bend the sail aboard the boat. And if, if, if one of the family died, they'd always paint the masthead blue and they'd have uh, sort of little panels on the woman and the guard. Blue mm -hmm. in the morning. Blue, not blue. black? No. Blue, a little bit lighter than your coloured trousers. Oh, quite a lightish no, blue, then. Eh? Quite a lightish <coughs> colour blue. Yeah. Though, <coughs> and they'd never, ever have any green. No, green, never, no, oh no, green was right out, taboo. What, for paintwork on the boat and paint clothes? Anywhere. Uh, anything at anywhere. all? And they didn't like, they used to like the wives wearing green or anything like that. Oh no. Mm, Very unlucky. My mum would super Very over green. My yeah. mother, and yet I love it. I had, mm. Well, I think it's nature's colouring, mm. isn't it? But, but what about, um, were there any, you know, sort of like things you could do to bring good luck, you know, to ensure a good catch or something like, like that? I mean, I've been told that the Cornish fishermen, when they were drifting for, for mackerel, used to put a, a piece of silver in the end float, this, you know, yeah, to, to know. like get yeah, good luck. Yeah. No, I don't think I've ever heard of any, any, no, any I've never good. Heard I've heard of anything, about witches no, and, any witches and, and ghosts and, I mean, and that sort if you of killed, thing. I'll tell you, if you killed a seagull, that was the mm. old gals, as they mm. call them. Yeah, terrible thing. Yeah. yeah, use for it. No, I've never heard of that. And, uh, um, no, about no, no, no. lightning and that sort of thing. I've well, lightning, very yeah, well, of course, terribly they used to get in, women yeah. used to get in the cupboard and shut the door. Well, I mean, the they have a, have a steel knife. Well, of course, well, they yeah, were steel mm, then. All the they? fire yeah, arms used to be covered yeah. up. Mirrors had to be covered yeah, up in the storm. Yeah. What about earrings? Did many of them yes, wear earrings? Yes, all wear earrings. They reckon that was... Uh, they reckon that was... Uh, that was something which they reckon would would it was a good omen. You save you from drowning and that sort of thing. You wore earrings, and 
Didn't they say something that was good for your sight or something? Oh, they used to say, have your ears pierced. Yeah. I was the only one in the family that didn't, didn't have their ears pierced. Yeah, well, I can remember all my Gladys uncle, and uncles had uh, yeah, earrings, you know, just yeah, the little yeah. coal yeah. earrings. You know, <laughs> father had them, but I oh, they used to be an old dad. Matter of fact, they're upstairs. Yeah, have your ears pierced. They all had earrings. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I believe that was a good charm. And they used to carry, if they could get a, what do they call that, uh, well, like after a birth? Oh, a call. Oh, call. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, they carry one of them, you'd never be drowned. Mm. Oh, that, that's yeah, that was, uh, yeah, I forgot, forgot about that. Yes, yes. That was all sort of some yes. of the things that they reckoned were yes. good omens. And I tell you something else. Now, when we used to make up the home preaching, because there used to be 300 people here, mm. from this village alone, well, perhaps they do a good voyage. Mm. Now, you'd get in the pubs by night, and you'd hear that they'd be, when well, I'll have accordion, mm. and, they, uh, and they'd all all stand up one at a time and sing all these old sea shanties. Oh, would they? Up the three mariners, all the fishermen's returned. Mm. And that's where they used to. And we used to have some lovely notes, and mm. you'd get all the old sea shanties. Yeah. Lovely, that was. On the 14th of February, when we set sail, on the Pope Princess Royal, bound for Newfoundland. Oh, yeah. And that's one of the songs, and there was um, The Rose of Tralee. Mm. That was another one. All the old mm. sea songs. They are all the old sea songs. And there was another one, I've, I've Killed a Flower of London. That was uh, that was another song. I don't know I thought that. No, I know. My father used to all the sing that. Do you know it? No, I wish I did. Oh. That was true, that was an old. Was that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I've killed the flower of London. My father used to all have seen that. So. Mm. Yes, how, how, uh... You I know mean, Sam Lana, you heard about Sam Lana? Funky. Mm. He made a record. He, 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 he no, got I, a record. I, I know, I don't know. Well, he, he, uh, uh, sung old sea shanties. Did he? We wouldn't get it now, Sam Lana. He was a winning man. He used to sing up the pub and all. Mm. That's where the, that's where the, the BBC fella come and, come and got then. Oh, yeah. See? Because he used to go off by the drifters. Oh, is this, uh, wait a minute, is this the one called Singing the Fishing or Singing the Herring? Or that's right. Yeah. Ewan McCall and, and that, was it, I think? There's, uh, well, there's, there's three or four songs on this one now. Yes, on the 14th of February we sail from the land In the boat trawler Leslie bound for the no sand There was five brave old seamen in the ship's company From the eastward and the northward to the northward stairway after we had been sailing for an hour, two or three, the deck hand at the tiller, the no light she did see. Hard on said the skipper, and how we'll have the yarn, and get the gear, and get the gear ready, boys, we'll shoot from her stern. And we had been towing during the night And we pulled out across the long shoal um, I forget now And we, uh, we pulled across the long shoal And when that lee tide was done We came to and hold We ten pairs of place and fourteen pairs of souls after we had been fishing for seven or eight days, the skipper said, stop the gear, boys, and we'll go our way. To the third hand, he gave the order, go down below and rest. To the mate, he gave the order, keep her in west, so west. After we had been sailing through the long night, the mate at the tiller, he saw lost of light. Come up on the deck, my boys, and the tops will take down. For it won't be very long before we're in lost of town. <laughs> 
This podcast has been made using sound recordings from the archive of Norfolk Museum Service, from the Time and Tide Museum in Great Yarmouth. These recordings have been preserved at Norfolk Record Office through the Unlocking Our Sound Heritage Project. The Norfolk Record Office has attempted to contact contributors to the archive recordings or their next of kin. As you may expect, this is not always possible. If you are related to any of the interviewees, the Norfolk Record Office would love to hear from you.